The year was 1992, and a team of researchers at the University of Parma in Italy were conducting an experiment on macaque monkeys. And this experiment gave further credence to the phrase or the idiom, monkey see, monkey do. Now in these experiments these Italian researchers were undertaking, they had certain monkeys and they were hooked up so their brain's activity could be measured. And they were trying to figure out if monkeys who simply observed another monkey doing a particular task, such as holding a banana, if the same part of the brain that activated in the participant monkey would also activate in the brain of the monkey that was just observing. And what they were trying to understand was how much observation and mimicry gives us the wherewithal to understand our society and the world around us. And what they found is that there are these particular brain cells called mirror neurons. And what mirror neurons are is they are neurons that activate whenever we observe someone else taking part in a particular activity. That's why sometimes you'll see younger children, if there's a young boy and he sees his dad shaving, then you'll see him pretend to shave himself. Or if you see a young girl looking at her mother putting on makeup, then the young girl will do her best to replicate that as she observes that behavior. That underscores how really remarkable mirror neurons actually are. But what I want you to do is take that study and use that as a lens through which we are going to approach tonight's video because the title of this video is Monkey See, Monkey Do. Now what I wanna do is talk about some certain recent events that have been going on here in America and around the world, but also establish a little more pretext and context as well. Now there was a tabletop simulation that took place at the NTI, which is the Nuclear Threat Initiative. In this organization, this was in Munich that this took place. This organization has, of course, funding ties to Bill Gates. And in this tabletop simulation that took place last year, they were forecasting and running simulations on what would happen if there was an unusual strain of monkeypox that suddenly swept across the globe. It's very interesting how we're seeing so much of these tabletop simulations come true in the very near future. We saw this happen with Event 201 as it relates to the unspecified virus of unknown origin. But it stands to reason that these are not so much simulations as they are preparations by the global elite in order to forecast or telegraph what their next punch is going to be. Now, what's really interesting about this period in time that we have now is before, there were lots of people out there who were asleep, who were not aware of Event 201, not prepared for what was to come with the unspecified virus of unknown origin. Therefore, many individuals were caught flat-footed. But now that we have these prior two years as pretext, we are able to fully understand what the game plan looks like and what that roadmap actually looks like. So now here we are in 2022, May of 2022, which in that tabletop simulation that took place in Munich during this nuclear threat initiative simulation, we are now in the same month that they forecasted this all would be taking place. We have to go a step further sometimes. We have to look back in order to look forward. And here's what I wanna tell you about. In January, January 22nd of this year actually, there was a truck that was carrying monkeys that had been flown in from Mauritius, which is an island off of Africa actually, in the Indian Ocean. And this truck had all these monkeys on it and it crashed into another vehicle they're in Valley Township, Pennsylvania. And there was a brief media scrum of sorts as media outlets, more so local media outlets, chose to cover, oh, there's a few escaped monkeys, be on the lookout for them. And what's really interesting is if you go back and read the articles about this monkey van crash, what you'll find is that the reason that they were being taken to the lab was not to a CDC approved, actually quarantine facility is where they were being taken to. They were taken there under spurious pretenses, and these are pretenses that were not ever fully made known to the public. And then when asked if the monkeys were diseased, the accounts of the individuals who were there say, oh, that information is not well known. And now we have this new monkey pox virus that seems to be sweeping the globe. And what I find very disquieting is that this is all taking place right on schedule. Now, if you remember my last video, Invisible Gorilla, we talked about how the media, the powers that be, will use certain events to divert your attention. What's really interesting is I asked many of you out there to go and watch the Invisible Gorilla experiment videos you can find on YouTube. 
And when you know what to look for, then obviously the experiment fails to hit home. But there's actually a second experiment that took place. And it's another invisible gorilla experiment. But in this one, obviously people are going to be looking for the gorilla in this case. So what's fascinating is if you go and find the second invisible gorilla video on YouTube, what you'll find is yes, you might find the gorilla in this second video, but you fail to realize other things are taking place that you were not paying attention to. Now, why am I going back to the Invisible Gorilla video in this video, Monkey See, Monkey Do? It is because in that last video, we talked about the World Health Organization's plans to have a treaty of member nations that would assure future pandemic preparedness response. Now, this is very important because we talked about in the last video how the WHO or the UN or whatever global governing body, they could simply make a recommendation to a country. You need to lock down preemptively or do this or do that or employ all of the same concepts that we just went through these past two years. And if we allow them to do that again, the joke is on us. The problem with society is as these first two years, or these past two years actually hit us directly in the face is the fact that because people did not have a pretext for what was going on, Many, far too many individuals out there simply chose to continue to do whatever they saw other people do so as not to rock that boat. But here's where the monkey see, monkey do analogy ties back in. Just because you see someone else doing something does not mean that you too should partake, especially when you know that danger is coming. Humans naturally and innately, I don't care what the BLM side or Antifa individuals seem to indicate, Humans have a higher level of cognition than primates do. Therefore, it stands to reason that just because our mirror neurons are firing, because we see someone else doing something, doesn't mean that we have to revert back to that subhuman category or state of being where you simply see another individual do something and they might get a reward for it too. Because that's how these experiments are taken out or are taken apart with the monkeys that we observe. The monkey notices that if they do a particular action, they're gonna get a reward. So if you translate that and draw parallels between that and what humans see, a human might see someone putting on a face covering, or they might see someone submitting to a jab or so on and so forth. Oh, and okay, um, now they got a reward. They got to go into this establishment or this establishment or do this or do that. So I want that reward too. And again, we are not subhuman primitive beings we are able to easily recall the dangerous strings attached to compliance. Therefore, it is our duty to not comply. Let's go a step further. There is a company called Bavarian Nordic. And this company is the one that for many years, if you go look online, they've been working with the US government for many years to develop a smallpox vaccine. Kind of interesting, right? And the smallpox vaccine is oddly enough able to be used to combat this monkeypox epidemic as it were, which is why the US government just purchased $119 million worth of this vaccine from this company, Bavarian Nordic. Side note, some of the largest shareholders in Bavarian Nordic, this vaccine company that now is magically spreading itself all over the world, the two largest or larger shareholders of Bavarian Nordic are Vanguard, and BlackRock. If there's anything we've learned over the last several years, it's that nothing is a coincidence. But the powers that be, the media, are daring you to not pay attention to the information because it's coming at you so quickly. Now, what's really interesting about the vaccine that these, this company, Bavarian Nordic, is producing for the monkeypox or has been producing for smallpox is the fact that the U.S. has another option down the road to purchase $180 million more million of this vaccine, right? And this vaccine also has been shown to have application in immune-compromised individuals. We've heard that phrase more than a few times over the past few months. It's no secret that we understand what is going on with these companies, but it's up to us to actually speak up against it and elevate our level of consciousness. Because when these companies have these moves they're making, it goes to show that the K in monkeypox is silent. This is about subjugating 
the collective whole of the globe while yet again enriching these organizations, these companies like Bavarian Nordic, which has shareholders being Vanguard and BlackRock, in order to further enrich those globalists, but force you to regress back into a state of lockdown. Let's go back to Monkey See, Monkey Do. One movie that I love watching is the 2011 Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And I'm making this analogy for very obvious reasons. Now, obviously there's apes in this movie and they do not have that higher level of consciousness, but the one main character ape, Caesar, he actually knows what's going on. He's trying to help his fellow brethren, his ape brethren, escape from this ape conservation facility that they're actually in. And one of my favorite scenes in this movie is when there is a very arrogant ape handler, if you will, there at the facility. And he goes around and terrorizes the apes who just really don't know any better, but Caesar is aware of what's going on. So he observes and watches what the code is to release the apes from their captivity. And then what's really interesting is this one scene here where Caesar more or less has this moment, this moment of awareness. And the ape handler is screaming at him, telling him to get back in his cage. He's threatening him, threatening him, right? And then as this individual, this arrogant ape handler goes to strike Caesar, Caesar uses words for the first time and says, no, he's not going to do what this arrogant ape handler says. And then he proceeds to knock the ape handler out, frees his brethren, and they simply wanted to be free, be released from captivity. And they were successful towards the end of that movie. This is the 2011 rendition of Planet of the Apes. But here's what I'm talking about. We have the ability to have a higher consciousness than what those primates in those experiments had. We have the ability to see something for what it is, but then that awareness itself was not enough. It's up to us to share information, this damning information. If you've got Vanguard and BlackRock and Bavarian Nordic and Bill Gates all in bed together telling you to take some certain vaccine or whatever for the monkeypox, I'm sorry, but the answer has to be no. A loud and forceful no. And then you channel that energy into freeing other individuals. Because instead of us being like primates, we just see someone else do something, oh, take the vaccine, oh, okay, I'll do that, oh, wear a face covering, okay, I'll do that, no. We're better than monkey see, monkey do. And it's up for us to live that out, day in and day out, no matter what the cost may be. Because there will be a cost that will be assessed, but it stands to reason that those of us here in America People look to us to exemplify leadership and freedom. And it's up to all of us out there to speak up against these organizations, these movements, these globalist moves before they become all encompassing and wake up our fellow men around us. Because we are better than monkey see, monkey do. Let's pray. God, you've given us the ability to see the world around us for what it is. And we thank you for allowing us to see the world for what it has become. We ask you to give us the ability to wake up those around us, to have an elevated state of consciousness, to not succumb to the phenomenon of simply observing someone else doing something and then doing it ourselves. You ask us to be leaders and to be warriors, and we ask you to give us the strength to do exactly that. Thank you for giving me the words to say yet again tonight. To you, we give all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guess what it's time for? It's time for homework. What I want you to do is use Google or another uh, web service. And I want you to Google the following phrase, NBC Pennsylvania monkey van crash. When you do that, you are going to find an article dated January 24th of this year. What I want you to do is go to the fourth to the last paragraph, the fourth to the last paragraph, and you're gonna see certain words that are hyperlinked or different colors, you can click on those words. It's gonna take you to certain different places. And I want you to click on those words and tell me what you find in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching. You know how it is. I'm Damani Felder. You can find me on Facebook, find me on YouTube, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter, find me on TikTok, find me on Rumble, find me on Gitter, find me on Gab, find me on Telegram. The list goes on and on. I will still be there as long as I, my profiles are allowed to exist, giving you the information that you need to know. For those of you who are interested, you can also find me on my own website, damanifelder.com. 
You can use the tools there to help yourself and help other patriots at the same time. And then also, the last thing I'm asking you to do is to share this video with someone who did not know the information we went over tonight. Share this video, like this page, comment down below. It helps my engagement and I will do everything I can to keep giving you the information that you need to know. But you know how it is here. End of the day, I love you all and I appreciate you all and I will catch you in the next one.